Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. So in this session, I shall be explaining the different operations on processes. The two main operations are the process creation and the process termination. Before you start watching this session, I request everyone to subscribe to my channel and share this video with all your friends. So let us start with the topic. The first operation here is the process creation. Now in the previous video and previous to previous, you all have come to know the concept of a process. So which are the different events that are making the process to get created? We say process creation has happened, but how does the process get created? So these four major, four major events are making in the system the different processes created. The first one is system initialization. Processes are created at boot time. This definitely all of us will agree. Whenever you start the system, you get on the screen, Windows is starting. So the system is getting booted. That is the first process that starts in the system. Okay, so we say a process has created here. So this event is leading to what process creation. And normally when you try to access the system, once the system is booted, you start typing, you start execute, you start uh, giving the different commands, start using the operating system. That time, if you if you observe, actually there are certain background processes that are happening. So there are foreground, foreground processes that you are going to make use of it or you are going to create. But at the same time, the background processes are also getting what executed. Foreground processes are interactive. A user will definitely what it will. The user is trying to type some command. It will get a re, uh, reply. The system will prompt some uh, type of query. The user will type once again the reply. So this way we say it is an interactive type of what. Uh, request and reply that is happening in this particular execution of process. Those processes are foreground process. Background process do not require the user intervention. Normally these processes, background processes are like a process to accept an email. Only when the email re, uh, arrives or the email reaches, the process becomes active. And there is a process for which, a suppose if there is a request for a web page, only that time whenever a request for the web page comes, that is there in the system, that particular web page, then the process becomes active. So these are the background processes. So that particular thing, foreground and background processes are there. Execution of a process, creation system call. So here in the second event, what exactly is happening is, there is a system call called as for. So which will create a process. So let us understand this concept in this way. There is a process which has already created let us give the name as process p1. This process p1 is what is using the system call called fork. When it uses this fork, another process gets created for p1 and that process is called as the child process. It is called as the child process. Now this p1 becomes what? The parent of this process. So we say it is a parent process. So the fork is the one which is going to create a process. That's why in the second principal event, we have written system call. Creation is done using the system call called as four. So normally this is happening because there is a task which is carried out by one process and related uh, to that particular task, if there is anything, any operation to be done, the parent process creates a child process. So one example is there is a huge data that is getting fetched from a file. Fetching of uh, fetching from the file can be done by the parent process and processing the data can be done by the child process. So this child is what is using the same address space that is allocated for the parent. Now when I say address space, that means the child process is a duplicate of the parent process and it has got the same address space. Now with respect to the address space, I'll be telling you uh, very soon after, once I complete this process creation. Time being, you just remember that fork is the one which is going to create the child process. Now a child process in turn can create another child process or it can create more than one child process. So that you will be seeing in the process hierarchy. Now this is what I wanted to tell you that this is the system call that is getting created. So we say process. A user request to create a new process. This is definitely very normal. Whatever pro you, you, you want to uh, perform a particular task, you type the command, the process gets created. You are opening, a, you are double clicking an icon on the screen. What you suppose if there is a Microsoft file or any PDF file, anything, if you want to open that, you double click it. That means the user is requesting here to create the process. So this is very common and uh, all of us will carry out this process creation. 
Next one is initiation, initiating a batch job. Now this also leads to process creation, but it is a batch job. Now what is batch job? All related instructions are put in a file and that will be submitted to the system for execution. So this is basically carried out. Suppose if there is an inventory which wants to perform uh, the complete operation of all the throughout the day activities that particular instructions are are written into a file and it is submitted at the end of the day to the system from the remote place. So there is no intervention from the user now. What we say in a batch the instructions have gone to the system. So it is the job of the operating system to create a process to carry out the execution of all those instructions. So we this is normally done for what the mainframe systems. So this event also leads to process creation. Now you have seen that these are the four principal events that leads to process creation. But you should also know that when in this second case, okay, for the second case, let me just uh, elaborate because these points you should know. Okay, it is important to know when you are when a parent process creates a child process using the folk system call, what happens for the resource allocation? Because the resources are allotted to the process. But the process has created another ch a child process. What about the resources for the child then? That you have to know. So this is one aspect. Resource allocation. What happens for the child process? What happens for the address space? This is also needed definitely. When a process is created, an address space is there for the process. So process P1 is created, process P1 got the address space. Process P1 has created a child process. Now what happens for the, what is the address space for the child? Whether the child will get a separate address space or it is the same address space of that of the parent. That you should be knowing. So this is the second aspect. Third aspect is execution. What happens for execution? Like whether these two child and uh, uh, parent process can execute at the same time or not that you have to know so for all these three aspects remember first one point resource allocation resources are allotted to the process let us assume process p1 p1 has created a child process c1 okay now p1 can that is the parent process can share all its resources with the child process this is the first possibility Second possibility is a parent can share some of its resources with the child process. So here the parent is becoming a little bit selfish. It's not going to give all the resources, some of the resources with the child process. Third situation is a parent will not give any of the resources to the child process. So here the parent becomes completely selfish. It's not going to give one single resource or a part of the resource to the child process. Then in the third situation, when it is not getting the resources, how does the child process execute? That time in this third situation, the operating system gives what the resources to the child process. Operating system allots what the different resources to the child process to carry out the execution. Second one, what happens with regard to the address space? So the address space, the, pair, the child process is a duplicate of the parent process. It will share the same address space as that of the parent. When it shares the same address space of the parent, okay, there if you see the different attributes, what are the different, uh, uh, this one information that is present in the process control block of the parent will also be applicable to the, what? To the child process, except for one attribute, which is called, which is what? Which is the process ID. Process ID is different for the child and for the parent. So this way, the address space will be there with respect with regard to the child and the parent process. Then if you uh, talk about the address space, it will have what it will it is a duplicate of the parent process. So it will share the it will uh, share the same address space as that of the parent process. But one more uh, slight deviation can happen here also with the respect to the address space. There is an another system call called as EXEC. So this EXEC will make the child process loaded with a new program. Now initially what has happened is the parent process has created a child process. The child process is also having the same program as that of the parent. But when this 
particular system call is used exec the child process whatever was there earlier will get replaced with a new process so completely loaded with a new so there are two possibilities now with address space also it will be what it will be simply having the same address space as that of the parent process but when it gets a new program loaded into it definitely a separate address space will be uh, meant or allotted to the child process so here also there are two possibilities here three possibilities i told you because the resources whether it is cpu memory or input output devices that are getting shared will have three possibilities now the next the third one is execution execution has got two possibilities the first possibility is the parent and the child process can run concurrently that means at the same time both the processes can execute but in the second possibility the parent process will not be allowed to run only the child process is getting executed suppose once uh, see the thing is the parent process and the child process both can run at the same time concurrently that means they are both can be uh, executing at the same time this is the first possibility in the second possibility the parent process has to wait until the child executes completely so once the child executes completely once the child completes the task the exit call is their system call exit which will tell the operating system to terminate the child process once the child process is terminated then the wait wait call was actually initiated by the parent process the parent is waiting for the child process to get terminated so when a value null is returned to the wait process the parent process will resume from there onwards so this is the second possibility when it comes to the execution so for process creation please remember that you have to talk on you have to write these points also whenever it is asked apart from what these four events that are leading to process term sorry creation then under which situations the process termination happens so process creation you have seen and now you should see under which situations so this first one is the normal exit that it is definitely when a process completes its task it makes an exit it gets terminated so we say this is voluntary exit also very simple complete the task and then exit next is the error exit if there is an error in the program so program is what set of instructions whatever are instructions there if you are making an error then there will be an exit here also this exit is also called as voluntary exit so these errors are mainly like uh, you are trying to use a file in the file name in the command line and that file itself is not existing in the directory for example you are you, are, you want to open a file you are writing here cat and the file name let us take file z then you will be prompted this file z is not existing so it will say file z does not exist this is the error that is shown on the screen so this type of error okay we say error exit and still it is voluntarily because the system has not interfered here as long as system is not interfering it is a voluntary only because the error is what in the program so we say an error exit the third type is the fatal error in this type what is happening is first of all it comes under the category involuntary okay the errors are like division by zero errors or referencing to a non existent memory or an illegal instructions so these three for example i'm just telling these type of errors may be there in case of in the third situation wherein the program wherein the process gets terminated the first can be what you are having an illegal instruction third one is like uh, second one is like divide by zero error is there or you are referencing a memory which is a memory location which is not existing at all non existent memory locations so that one will lead to what in exit this one termination of the process and it is involuntary and the fourth one is killed by the another process a process can kill another process using the kill command okay but which process can create uh, kill see if at all if this particular uh, right to kill a process is given to every all other processes in the system then every process would have what would have started using what the kill command to kill the other processes but that is not the case in this situation only a parent process can kill the child process 
so here the logic is the parent has created the child process and the parent is now trying to kill the child process the parent kills the child process in situations wherein it sees that the child process is using resources more than allotted by the parent so in that situation also the child uh, the parent process can kill the child process so this is only the authority is to whom the authority given to kill a process is only to the parent and it will kill only its uh, uh, its processes that is the processes created by the parent only the child processes so this is all about the process termination and then uh, you should also know uh, yeah for process hierarchies i'll just tell you because this video is going to become quite lengthy let me either add the diagram at the end of the video and give you the explanation also so this is all about the process creation and process termination to summarize you just remember process creation happens under four principal events process termination happens under four principal events process creation when it is happening in the second type that is the spoke system call you need to talk what happens to the child processes and what happens to these different three aspects with regard to the what with regard to the child process so and you should know the different system calls that are used here fork is one then you have the exec exec exit wait so this is all about the process creation and process termination hope this session is useful to you all thank you bye bye take care